complex mechanisms, efficient production chains, and business management. Hello, my name's Gamezak, and welcome to my 30 upcoming PC simulation games for 2019 and 2020 list. Now, this year I looked at over 200 in-development simulation games, so I had to be specific with my curation as I can't include them all. In this list, the focus is on more gamey system building and management along with tycoon games. And remember, city building and space both have entire lists dedicated to their subgenres. Notably, I'm not listing simulators as they aren't gamey enough. There's a whole discussion there, but I did put a bunch in the description. If you think something's missing, mention it down below. But for now, let's get started. First up, we've got Prehistoric Kingdom by Shadow Raven Studios. One with a dinosaur theme, here's a realistic dino theme park management game. Build your park, breed extinct animals, and manage your kingdom. Various game modes are promised too, including a campaign, challenges, sandbox, and staff mode where you play an actual keeper. It isn't in early access yet, but there is a free demo that you can try. Dev updates come about once a month, and although it looks like it's got a ways to go, it's coming along nicely. The big question is how will this compare to Jurassic World Evolution? This could be a more developed game being free from such a strict license, or it could end up lacking in personality. That's something we'll need to check before jumping into Prehistoric Kingdom on release. Continuing with dinosaurs, it's Parkosaurus by Washbear. Dino Park Tycoon was a dinosaur park management game from 1993. You can actually play that for free in browser at archive.org. Or you can check out this spiritual successor. Parkosaurus brings a lot more to the game such as more management, researching technologies, customization and design options, and nice gameplay additions. Notably how the design of your dino pens affects its environment that needs to fit the dinos that live in it. There are also hats. The cartoony art style will not be to everyone's taste, but having played the game, I can say it somehow manages to still look very pretty. Development of new gameplay features has been rather slow since entering early access on Steam though, so we'll see if Parkosaurus hits its goal for a 2019 release. On a more global scale, it's Imagine Earth by Sirius Brothers. A civilization sim looking a bit like the universe sim, and about as old in development. This is a game about building up colonies on distant planets, establishing trade, researching technologies, and competing against rivals set in a capitalist space age. You'll also need to deal with climate change and disasters on the planets you build on. A story-based campaign and competition mode is also a thing. Okay, some of you probably already know about this one and might be thinking it's an old one. That's because it entered Steam Early Access way back in 2014 and it's now here because it's got an official release date set for 2019. Despite the long dev time, it's gotten a modest amount of mostly positive reviews. But if you're not entirely sure about it, there is a free demo. So feel free to have a closer look at Imagine Earth. Speaking of, we've got The Universe Sim by Crytivo. A god game simulation about managing an entire planet and guiding a civilization from the Stone Age into the Space Age. Place building, survive nature, collect resources, research tech, and cast god powers. The game was successfully kickstarted way back in 2014, raising almost $400,000. And it's been a long while with lots of developmental delays, understandably earning it a lot of criticism. Now, finally being in early access on Steam starting in 2018, with mostly positive reviews, we've seen more changes and improvements in the last year, and it could be back on track, just years late. If you're unsure about the Universe Sim, you could wait until closer to full release, which is roughly aiming for 2020. Sticking with being a god, it's Godhood by Abbey Games. This is a god game where you create your own religion and try to be the greatest deity. Here you'll guide your followers, design your belief system, complete missions, and compete in turn-based combat against rival gods. It's also promising deep simulation for replayability as you experiment and discover new things along the main storyline. 
Important to note, there is a Kickstarter for the game in early 2019, but it's not to fund the game, it's to expand it. The base game is already funded and slated for a 2019 early access release, but if they raise more funds, they'll add more features and gameplay. Don't know how this one's going to turn out at the end of the day, but another God game is nice to have, and we can keep an eye on Godhood and hope it delivers on its promises. Then we have Goblins of Elderstone by Lost Goblin. The Goblin Tribe Simulator. Build a goblin city by nurturing your tiny clan and grow the goblin war machine by raiding dungeons and challenging enemies. There are a lot of resources and a crafting tree, so scout, raid, trade, defend, and wage war. It's been in early access for a year, with few and mixed reviews on Steam, so it's really not looking the best, but it is still getting regular updates and could figure things out over the next year or so. The bad reviews are mainly to do with bad AI, tons of bugs, and crashing. It could be an eventual success, but time will tell if Goblins of Elderstone will be able to pull it off. Now there's a ton of resource management production chain transport games coming up, so let's start with Rise of Industry by Dapper Penguin Studios. A game that at first looked to be a simple simulation tycoon, once in early access it was received very positively on Steam. It's an industrial management production line where you build factories, construct transport lines, move raw materials, produce finished goods, and trade. The low poly style isn't for everyone, but it works for what this is, and most notably the user interface is particularly efficient and easy to use. It was meant to fully release by the end of 2018, but it's still in alpha and needs more time. There is a free demo though, so you can check it out right now and see if Rise of Industry lives up to your expectations. Next is Kubi Factorium by Mirko Zaitha. Colony building, automation, and transportation. Here you build and manage as you try to grow a thriving colony while exploring new lands with different biomes, exploit resources, build machinery, and set up complex production chains. The low poly visual style tends to split people's opinions, some loving it and some hating it. But there are better looking examples of low poly out there. The game was kickstarted in 2018 with 20,000 euros, so it is a smaller development, but there is also a free demo that you can check out for yourself. There's a lot of competition for the transport production chain type thing this year, so let's continue comparing Kubi Factorium with its competition. Now we have Factory Town by Eric Asmussen. Starting in a quaint village in the middle of wilderness, you develop it into a magic-powered bustling metropolis through optimization and logistical mastery. It's another production chain kind of game with a cartoony art style, but gameplay includes complex systems, lots of controls, and a map editor, with vertical building being what sets this apart. The plan is to go into beta early access around quarter one of 2019, but with games like this, a full release is always hard to predict and could be a while. If you like the look of Factory Town, keep an eye on it and we'll see how it is in early access. Moving more into trains, it's Train Valley 2 by Flasm. A train tycoon puzzle game where you build efficient railroads, upgrade locomotives, and keep things on track, <laughs> get it, to meet the demands of cities and help them grow. Produce and ship goods, play through company mode, and a level editor with Steam Workshop support are also a thing. Visually, it's low poly, but not necessarily cartoony, and I have to say it's a nice color palette to look at. It's been in early access on Steam since 2018, and people have been liking it with very positive reviews. It intends to release in 2019, but it could always take longer than that. But so far, Train Valley 2 seems to be shaping up nicely. Then we've got Voxel Tycoon by Voxel Tycoon Devs. This one's a tycoon strategy game about building transportation systems, mining resources, and building infrastructure and factories in an infinite voxel world. Looking to be a mix of Transport Tycoon and Factorio, this could be a combination that brings you a new experience or it might struggle to live up to either of its inspirations. Though modding from day one is promised. There's an incredibly detailed roadmap that shows a ton of features, but it's late coming to early access on Steam, so we don't have a proper look at the game yet. It's a small team and development updates come about once a month, but we'll just have to wait until we can play Voxel Tycoon to see if it delivers. 
Then we have Mashinki by Jan Zeleny. For one more transport simulation with a unique look, this solo dev game is about building your own transport imperium on a procedurally generated map. The multiple visual styles for different game modes is a nice touch and both look easy on the eyes. And you grow your business through the ages, inventing new buildings and vehicles while maximizing profits by transporting passengers and cargo. It's in early access on Steam right now with mostly positive reviews and development updates are frequent, though sometimes late, notably adding Steam Workshop support recently. Final release is planned for 2019 to 2020, but projects like this have been known to run longer than expected, so you can wait for full release or check Mashinki out now in its unfinished state. For one more train game, it's Railroad Corporation by Corby Games. Set in the midst of the pioneering spirit during the golden age of steam, here you'll be running your own train business across 19th century North America. Build your own lines, blast through terrain, influence and develop towns and cities, and engage in lobbying along with the stock market. Overall, it seems promising and you have the option to play solo, versus, or a free-for-all against many competitors. However, not too much gameplay has been shown off yet and it's unclear what the release state will be like. Scheduled for early 2019, we should be getting a proper look at Railroad Corporation soon. With a name that defines it, it's Production Line by Positech Games. This is a car factory management simulation business game where you design and build a complex production facility akin to Factorio, but modern and indoors. The game really is all about tons of complexity, fiddling and min-maxing. In early access on Steam and since 2017, with very positive reviews, it's also on GOG early access but there are reports that the version there isn't always up to date. Originally wanting to release after six months, it's now been much longer for its development, but updates are regular, though there's no clear window when it could get a full release. If you're okay with that, you can have a closer look at Production Line. Now, not about trains, but train stations, it's Overcrowd A Commute em Up by Square Play Games. A train station management sim where it's not about the trains, but about the people getting in and out of them, set in the London Underground. You get a procedural map where you'll have to build rooms, set up facilities, hire staff, keep people happy, deal with crime, and turn a profit. So far, the game looks to have a lot of character to it, but a lot could go wrong if it's not balanced, optimized, and bug-free. A concern for early access indie simulation games. Scheduling an early 2019 early access release on Steam, Overcrowd A Commute em Up will be playable soon. More on the business side, we have Good Company by Chasing Carrots. Calling itself a corporate machinery simulator, you start in a garage selling things you make and build your way up to become a global market leader. You run everything from hiring employees, research and development, setting up production lines and securing business deals. Artistically speaking, the game looks to have a lot of style and personality too. Quarter 2 2019 is when it's meant to enter early access on Steam, so that's when we'll see if Good Company has everything in order, or if there'll be some kinks to work out. On the green, it's Resort Boss Golf by Gus Martin. Looking to be a new Sim Golf, be your own golf tycoon starting from a single hole course and growing to a 5 star destination. Gameplay seems heavily inspired by Sim Golf, with building courses, developing your resort, and playing on the green yourself. But visually, it isn't the most stylistic game to look at, and a concern would be besides gameplay, it might lack character. Set for a 14th of February 2019 release, you can be ready to play around if you're up for Resort Boss Golf. And then we have Crossroads Inn by Kraken Unleashed. This is a real-time management sim where you run an inn set in a fantasy world. Satisfy visitors, manage staff, chart trade routes, become influential with guilds, and follow a non-linear campaign to become king? There's more to this one than you'd expect and effort has been made to give the game character with unique people, a storyline, and an original world. Gameplay footage so far looks decent, but not too much has been shown off really. A Kickstarter campaign is meant to start in February 2019, with a pretty modest goal aiming to expand the project. So we'll see how that goes and how Crossroads Inn turns out. 
Staying in the inn, it's Oi Innkeep by Bad Bandit Games. First person cooking, farming, and tavern management. Turn a rundown inn into a thriving business by providing food and drink to customers, renting out rooms, growing crops to use as ingredients, experimenting with recipes, decorating, and making money. It looks a bit crazy, funny, and over the top, but it's hard to say if gameplay will hold up or if the humor will run dry this early on. This could be a fun, deep, and charming game filled with quirky personality, but games like this could end up buggy and bland too, as it is a two-person team. An early 2019 early access release will let us see what Oi Inkeep really is, and hopefully it delivers what's on the menu. Next up we have Seelig by Stardog Games, a trading and management game centered around building up family wealth in the Dark Ages. It's sort of a mix between Banished and The Sims, and you develop your village by buying businesses, making goods, and trading. Being a life sim too, finding love and committing crimes are also on the table, along with living through the generations of your family. In early access on Steam now, with mostly positive reviews, it's been getting regular updates and bug fixes, though it's already well past the original release window for coming out of early access. The visual style isn't the best, and design overall is a bit rough, but if you like economic and lifestyle sims, Seelig could be for you. Going a bit more political, it's Riot Civil Unrest by Leonard Menchiari and IV Productions. Play as the police or rioters in multiple game modes. With a super gritty pixel art style, this Riot simulation game was pretty anticipated, but after releasing into early access on Steam, it got mixed reviews, mainly for lacking in the gameplay department, and it was buggy. Initially wanting an early 2018 release, more time was taken to refine the game, and now it's got a full release date set for February 2019. Notably, reviews have become more positive recently, and the important level editor was completed. So if you were disappointed the first time around, or you've been waiting for a complete game, you might want to start disrupting in Riot Civil Unrest now. Sticking with politics and government, it's Democracy 4 by Positech Games. The political simulator is back with a new installment and keeping up to date with the times and current issues. Corruption, press freedom, and fake news. This isn't really a game for everyone. It's not known for its flashiness, but it's been a decent simulation of politics so far. Though it being about politics, people are often divided on whether or not it's a good representation. Nothing of the game has been shown off despite it being scheduled for a 2019 release, so I'd wait for a better look before making any calls on Democracy 4. Moving to the future, but staying in politics, it's Spinortality by James Patton. Calling itself a cyberpunk management sim, grow your megacore, influence media, start riots, spread fake news, topple governments, control the world, and become immortal. This is a business sim where power and wealth are the focus, allowing you to research technologies, blackmail people, and transfer your mind into new bodies. It's not the prettiest game to look at, but it released in February 2019 with few but mostly positive reviews. However, there has been some criticism about it being too simplistic and lacking replayability. If the idea of it is something that appeals to you, have a closer look at Spinortality and see if it spins you the right way. On a smaller scale, it's Mr. Prepper by Rejected Games. A game about building an underground shelter underneath your house in preparation for a nuclear war. Build your shelter, craft production machines, trade with neighbors, and beware of the secret police in this kind of alternative colony management sim. Not too much has been shown off so far, so this could be a game that ends up as a complex system building simulation, but it's very easy for something like this to be shallow or simplistic. I'd be cautiously optimistic and check reviews for Mr. Prepper on release. Moving up into space, we have Meeple Station by Vox Games. 
Build a space station, trade goods, research tech, explore galaxies, and complete missions while trying to keep your meeple alive. A space station colony simulator inspired by RimWorld, here you can play co-op with friends and you expand your base and survive against pirates and meteors. It has a simpler art style that might not impress everyone, but looks good enough for what it is. And it entered early access on Steam in 2019 with few but mostly positive reviews. Most criticisms are to do with the game being incomplete, even for an early access title, but the plan is to finish the game before the end of 2019, so we'll see if Meeple Station can become a solid experience on time, or if it'll be delayed. Staying on the same vein, it's Space Haven by Bugbite. Okay, another space colony management sim inspired by RimWorld? Design and build your spaceship, missions, and survival of crew. It's sounding similar to the last one, but here we have gas simulation, a promise of deep characterization of your people, and ship-to-ship -ship combat. Visually, it's a bit more stylish compared to Meeple Station, and is quite nice to look at. And overall, they're similar games with distinct differences in flavor. Development for this is a bit further off though, the Kickstarter only beginning in 2019, but with a game build available soon after. If 2D space colony management survival simulation is what you're after, check out both and then see if Space Haven is the one for you. Onto the Martian surface we have Occupy Mars The Game by Pyramid Schemes. Building of bases and researching of technologies as you explore the surface of Mars to collect resources, grow crops, drive vehicles, fix parts, and survive. We've seen some footage from the game and it looks like it has potential, but actual gameplay is still unclear due to the lack of detailed updates. They've been saying the game will release in 2019 after missing the 2018 release window, and progress videos are posted on their Facebook page. But it's a little vague on how long Occupy Mars really needs before it's done. And then we have one that got a lot of attention, it's Satisfactory by Coffee Stain Studios. Construct, automate, explore, and exploit. Basically a first-person factorio, you'll be building complex structures, setting up efficient production lines, and surviving on the planet as you take everything you can, in single player or multiplayer. Many have been hyped about this game since it was revealed, and it could be exactly what you're looking for. Just keep in mind that it's a big game and things can go wrong. So let's keep an eye on Satisfactory and hope its production progresses smoothly. Next up we've got Astroneer by System Era Softworks. Explore and reshape alien worlds set during a 25th century intergalactic age of discovery. Alter terrain, build vehicles and bases, and survive procedural planets in single-player or four-player co-op. Newer features more recently added are an improved vehicle system, persistent goals, more crafting, and player customization. It is a sandbox though, so if you're looking for a more directed experience, it might be a bit too freeform. But if you're into sandbox games, there is a lot to do here. After entering early access in 2016, it quickly got a good reputation and very positive reviews as it developed. It released on the 6th of February 2019, so if you've been eyeing this one for a while, waiting for a complete experience, you can now jump into Astroneer. And finally we have Oxygen Not Included by Clay Entertainment. Space colony management and simulation, you guide colonists to build a base, survive the hostile environment, and set up intricate systems to keep everything going. This is a game that has a ton of detail and gameplay, but can be somewhat overwhelming as it throws you in the deep end and more content keeps getting added. Having been in early access on Steam since 2017, a lot of progress has been made, and by the end of 2018, all the major themed updates have been completed. Development continues to refine things and tie everything together with smaller editions of content, and there's a plan for one last big update for the launch of Oxygen Not Included. Alright, now for some bonus games. First for some that everyone kind of knows about and there's no clear release window and have been playable for many years, we've got Rise to Ruins that's been in early access since 2014, Medieval Engineers early access since 2015, Automation that's been in early access since 2015 and stated it's still some time away, Software Inc early access since 2015 and it's still in alpha. Besiege and The Last Leviathan, Early Access 2015 and 2016 respectively, 
Scrap Mechanic, Early Access since 2016, and Factorio, Early Access since 2016. And just as a little bit of a bonus, some notable action simulation games for 2019 and 2020, Aquinox Deep Descent, Ace Combat 7, and Mech Warrior 5. Besides that, going forward with simulation games, two studios are making some moves. First, there is Two Point Studios, which released Two Point Hospital, and they might release more stuff in the Two Point universe. And Paradox acquired Prison Architect, and they're thinking of doing an Architect series. So we could be looking at two distinct series from two different studios here. But we'll just have to wait and see what they do. And that's it! 30 plus upcoming simulation games that should be releasing through 2019 and some into 2020 depending on their development. Which ones are you most excited about? Also, here's something I'd like to know. How do you define a simulation game? There is a voting and discussion video linked in the pinned comment, but it's such a vague genre. How do you think it's best to draw lines between categories? Now, if you'd like to see more upcoming games, check out the other lists on the channel, sorted by genre shown at the top of the video, like city building and space for many more upcoming PC games, or my Gamer Encounter series where I take a much more extensive gameplay look at specific games. All right, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and found it useful, and I'll see you in the next video.